Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Math 21, College of the Sequoias. And Math 21 is Introduction to Statistics, uh, where we start exploring uh, a lot of the algebraic formulas to statistics and looking at things like probability, which is what chapter five is on. Uh, on my screen right now, I have a couple things that I'm going to use in my presentations, and I thought I'd lead with them. Most of you are familiar with dice. I've seen them at some point. They have six sides, the standard die, and each one's numbered one through six. Opposite sides, add to seven. Like this has got a one, and if I flip it over, there's a six, and one plus six makes seven. Same thing's happen with the other sides. I've got a five here. If I turn it over, I've got a two there, that's seven. And then three and four are opposite each other as well. Uh, there are other shaped dice, though. These are dice that are commonly used in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, a, 20, a dice that has 20 sides. This one's got 12 sides. It's made up with little pentagons going all the way around. Uh, the 20 sides got triangles going all the way around, as does the eight sided little triangles. There are 10 sided dice, and they like to do them where one has got tens digits and the other one's got ones digits so you can get do percentage and then this little bad boy is a four-sided die and when you roll it whatever land you'll notice like the four right there is right there as well it's right there as well when you roll it it lands like like so and so whatever points point pointed up is where it is that's how those are the dice has four sides it's like a pyramid. Uh, there are other weird shaped dice too, but these are the common ones that tile regular shapes and do easy designs. I'm gonna use the six sided primarily. Uh, the other thing I, I use frequently is a, a deck of cards. And I found out recently through teaching, many uh, young college students have never actually played with the deck of cards. So there, in a deck of cards, there are 52 standard cards. Half of them are black, uh, and the black cards comp are comprised of the top row here. They're called clubs. They look like three-leaf clovers. And the bottom row is spades, and a spade is another name for a shovel. They look like the head of a shovel. Uh, so spades and clubs are black, and then we have hearts and diamonds. These are called the suits. And we all know what a heart and diamond shape looks like. Those are red. There's also 13 cards in each suit. Uh, they're numbered from one to 10, where we call the one the ace. And then there are three face cards, the jack, the queen, the king. Jack is kind of like the prince kind of thing, king and queen, royalty. Uh, each suit has them, and they are used in a lot of games of chance, like poker, blackjack. Uh, but if you've never used them, uh, this is what they look like. So, probability. This is chapter five, probability. And I'm going to do 1.1 1 .1 and 1. or 5.1 and 5.2 in this exercise. Probability. Do 5.1 and 5.2. Uh, and tools I'll use. are two six-sided dice. In gaming world, they stay stuff like this. D6 stands for six-sided dice, or six-sided die, and that says how many of them. I will also use a deck of cards in examples. Deck of cards, as you can see in the picture here, there are 52 cards with four suits having 13 cards each. The suits are hearts, 
clubs. And I'm doing the color of the name is the suit they are, or the color they are on the cards, and spades. Arts clubs, diamonds, and spades are the suits. And they're called the rank, the rank of the card. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. This is ace, jack, queen. and king. Some games, uh, ace is on bottom, is lowest, like here it's a one, and others, it's top. The top card, which means it's bigger than king. All right. Those will be what we use. Now let's just talk about probability in general. I wanted to show some pictures there so you got to see what they look like. Okay, a lot of people had never seen decks of cards before. Uh, you can play games with them like Solitaire, and you see them on phones have apps that do it. All right, so probability, what is it? Well, probability is a measure of the likelihood of a random event phenomenon or a random chance occurring. Ooh, occurring. Occurring, I think, two hours, I don't know. Uh, or happening. The, the, the likelihood of it happening. It describes, The long term proportion uh, with which a certain what's going on with my with which a certain outcome will occur in situations with short-term short uncertainty. I'll pause a second, let you write that down. It describes, that's a lousy E right there. Describes. And, and, it describes the long-term proportion with which a certain outcome will occur in situations with short-term uncertainty. The easiest way to present this example is with my dice. There are six sides, and when you roll on, whichever side is on top is how the dice is read. So this blue one is a four, this pink one is a five. You count the spots. If the number's not written on them, some dice have the numbers written on them. Like these have numbers, not spots. But a lot of the traditional dice use spots. Uh, and so when I roll it like here, I got a four and a six. Now that doesn't mean every time I roll this blue die, I'm gonna get a four. I roll it again and I get a two. So, that's a short-term uncertainty. Whatever ha I don't know when I throw the die what I'm going to get. It could land on anything. It landed on four again. It landed on five. Uh, 
So that is short-term uncertainty. But in the long run, if I throw the dice enough times and I just count up how many ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and sixes I get, they should all be roughly equal because it should be as equally likely to roll a one as it is to roll a five, uh, assuming fair dice. Uh, so you will also you will see the words uh, a fair die, which is singular for dice. Singular of dice is a die that has equally likely outcomes for all six sides. Wow, I just can't write today. Outcomes for all six sides. Okay. Uh, most games of chance in a casino depend on this. Most games of chance in a casino. In a casino, use this. Like blackjack, poker, craps. Etc. These are all games, uh, and and the other things you know on uh, lotto drawings. When they do the lot lotto drawings, they generally throw balls in a blower, and then the ones that pop out. Lotto drawings also have equally likely chances. Not all things do, though. So if you look up something called Pass the Pigs, this is a game. And some of my Tulare students like this a lot because they're into uh, agriculture. So past the pigs, you get two pigs, and they look look like this. And they can land on their feet. They can land on their. Let's see if they we got pictures for them. Nope. Let's let's try again. Past the pigs. Oh, maybe the official site will have it. So the pigs look like that. Notice their feet are like a little askew. And does it show pictures? There we go. Cute pictures rather than pictures. Oh, wow. Life size. Big old pigs. Not what I was looking for. So it's a game you can buy, and I use them in class. And I wish I had them at home. I didn't bring them home. So these pigs can land a bunch of different ways. When they land on their feet, they're called trotters. The pig is standing upright. You can see scoring down here. A trotter lands on its feet. When it lands on its back with all four feet in the air, it's called a razorback. If it's landing on its side, it, it can land on its side two ways. One of the sides has a black dot on it. The other side has no dot on it. So it's side with dot or side with no dot. Uh, and then it can, it can land where it's leaning completely on its nose. It looks like this pig right here in the upper right is doing that, landing on its nose. And it can land on its nose and be tipped to the side where it's on its ear as well. 
and that's called a leaning jowler. When it lands on its nose, it's called a snouter. When it lands on its ear and nose, it's called a leaning jowler. And notice the points are not equally scored because the probability of getting them is uneven. In fact, we explore this probability in class when we do it in person. Uh, but I can show you after they've thrown the pigs 11,954 times, they found the percentage chance of the side with no dot showing up on top is 34.9% side with the dot showing up is lower at 30.2%. And then landing on it back happens a lot at 22, but look how low that leaning jowler is, 0.61%, less than a 0.1% or less than 1% chance uh, is re really low. So they're not all le equally likely. When you throw a pig and pass the pigs, you're more likely to get them to land on their side than any other combination. Okay, so that's some examples of un unlikely things. So pass the pigs, because it helps me mention the next topic here. Pass the pigs game has unequally, unequally likely outcomes. Landing on the side is is thirty four percent or thirty percent, while getting a leaning jowler is less than one percent. Rolling a leaning jowler is less than one percent. Okay, so those are unle unequally likely outcomes. Uh, what, when outcomes are un, when we have unequally likely outcomes, the way we determine the probability. is through experimentation. Repeated experimentation. So I'm gonna give, let's look at that Wikipedia thing. I got this over, over here loaded on the right and we'll look at the, the probabilities. So from Pass the Pigs Wikipedia, Uh, with a sample size n equals 11,954, remember we use lowercase n for sample size, we found the side with no dot not a side not, not what I wanted to say, side with no dot was at 34.9%. Side width dot is 30.2%. We've got Razorback at 22.4%. A Trotter at 8.8%. A Snouter at 3%, 3.0%, and the leaning jowler at 0.61%. Now, if I want, I'm, I want to write these as a decimal because it's easier to show the next step. So writing these as a decimal, to write as a decimal, shift the decimal place right or left twice. Move the point left twice and drop the percent. So 
So if I move it left twice, I've got 0.349. This is 0 0.302, 0 0.224. If you don't have a number, put a zero there. That way I can move it left twice. 0 0.088. 0 0.030 and 0 0.0061. Uh, you will notice and these are the percentages or probability that they will land this way. These values are the probability that a pig from that game, from past the pigs, uh, note that the probability as we'll see in a little bit, probability, we usually give the letter P. The probability is, is greater than zero and it's less than one. They're all decimals under one, okay? If I add those all up, 0.349, plus 0 0.302, plus 0.224, plus 0 0.088, plus 0 0.030, plus 0 0.0061. I get 0 0.9991. Uh, they had to do some rounding on this. All the, the sum of all probabilities, equals one. And as I'll go over a little bit more in a second, uh, how, how can I find out how many they got of each? Okay. So I'm going to use those values right now. So we had, we had N equals 11,954 and the leaning jowler had a probability of 0 0.0061. If I multiply these two together, I can see how many pigs they got. Pigs that landed as a leaning jowler. And let's do that real quick. 11,954 times 0 0.0061, 72.973. Eleven thousand nine hundred fifty four times point zero zero six one is approximately seventy three. Seventy three pigs out of eleven thousand two hundred or nine hundred eleven thousand nine hundred and fifty four tosses. Seventy-three tosses, I should say. Seventy-three tosses out of eleven thousand nine hundred fifty-four tosses landed as a leaning jowler. And I can double check the math here. 
this means if we look at the number of the outcomes over the total number total, 73 over 11, 954. I've got to do this on another page. Pause this if you need it up a little bit longer. So 11,954 tosses led to 73 leading gelers. To calculate the probability of an event, you put the uh, they like to abbreviate it like this NE over NS. The number of times the event occurred over the number of total events. For our pigs, NE is 73. 73 times it landed as a leaning jeller. And S was the 11,954. And so the probability of rolling a leaning jeller, they do NE over NS, number of events, or number of the event, number of times the event occurred over the number in the sample size, 73 over 11,954. That leads to division. This is 73 divided by 11,954. And oh, my calculator uses scientific notation. This was 0 0.00610672, and they rounded. Okay. That's how you calculate probability. This approach I took here when you determine probability through re repeated experimentation. This is called the empirical method. So they use the empirical method to determine the probability that a pig would land in any of those positions. They did it a lot of times, okay? This is different than classical method. The classical method, uh, requires equally likely outcomes. And then it just ends up being one over the total number of outcomes. Okay. And this leads to an interesting property. Uh, the, ex the empirical method, it leads to an interesting property. With enough trials or events, or events, the experimental probabilities
become indistinguishable from the true proportions. Now, this is a little bit harder to see with the pigs because we don't know the true proportions. But like dice, we know the true proportions. The true proportions for a die on a six-sided die for any given value, one, two, three, four, five, or six. Well, the probability of rolling a one is the same thing as the probability of rolling a two, which equals the probability of rolling a three, the probability of rolling a four, the probability of rolling a five, and the probability of rolling a six. They all are, there's six possible outcomes that goes on bottom, and each of the events only has, each number has only one side on the die, so it's one out of six, okay? Now, when I throw these, I got a six and I got a four. Those are, you can't see that very well because of the glare. I got a six and a four, those events are locked in. That's the outcome for those events. But if I throw these dice like a thousand times, if I throw six-sided dice, throw dice like a thousand times, I should get roughly the same amount of each toss approximately the same number of occurrences for each outcome. Uh, this, this idea is called the law of large numbers. If you do the experiment enough times, the true, the, the proportion of the, or your, your outcomes, the probability for each outcome in your experiment approach the actual values. So this is called the law of large numbers. And it means doing more tosses isn't gonna really change that fact. And I can illustrate this best with the pigs data that we got. Let's take a look at that pigs data. I still got the leaning jeller on the screen, and we said there was, so uh, to show this or illustrate this, we had n equaled 11,954 tosses with 73 leaning jellers. Let's say I toss one more pig. I toss a pig one more time and it lands leaning jowler. Uh, let's show both ways. Okay, so the new number of tosses, our new number of tosses n, Well, we're just going to add one to that number right here is 11,954 or 55. If I roll a jowler, let's just say J, J now equals 74. If I don't, J is still equal to 73. What's the new probability? 
I'm leaving space where I'm gonna where I'm gonna do it. So here is the new probability with one more toss. We again remember, okay, so we always put P and then we put parentheses and then the event. We usually use capital letters for the event and we use a, a letter that uh, matches up with the category. Leaning Jowler, I'm gonna use a J because J's are very easy to distinguish from other letters. So P parentheses J is the number of times J came up over the number in the sample size. Same thing down here. Okay, so what did we have? For if we roll a jowler, it's now 74 jowlers, and we're having our new n is 11,955. And if we didn't roll a j, it's still 73 on top, but n is now 11,955. Let's figure out what these percent or what these decimal values are. 74 divided by 11955 equals point zero zero six one eight nine. So 0.00629. Which in debt or percentage forms is 0.62%. If I don't get it, I got 73 divided by 11,955. And it becomes 0 0.006106 uh, to three decimal or four decimal places, 0 0.0061 or 0.61%. Aren't these really close to what I got on the screen? Leaning Jowler right there is 0.61%. Even rolling another Jowler, which was an extremely rare outcome, only increased it up to 0.62% from 0.61% which means one one hundredth of a percent increase. And this is what we mean by the law of large numbers. Once you've done enough trials or experiments, doing a few more generally doesn't change the probability enough to be distinguishable. If you got a 99.99% on the test or a 99.9% eight on the test it's you're you're it's the same right it doesn't mean anything to you uh okay so stuff you might see in the homework They might give you a probability. And then ask, uh, something like this. If the probability of being left-handed is 0 0.11 or probability of left equals 0 0.11 about how many or approximately how many how many will be left-handed
out of 2,000 people, let's say. And to determine that, just multiply the two values. 2,000 people. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.11. This is about 11%, so I think it's 220, but let me do it in a calculator real quick. 2,000 times 0.11, 220 is 220 people, okay? And so if we ask 200 people, this is important to know about probability. It's not, it doesn't lead to fixed results. If we ask 200,000 people if they're left-handed, and the probability of being left-handed is 0 0.11 or 11%, we will get near 220 people. And sometimes exactly 220, but rarely. We just asked 2,000 different people. It could be we might get to 11, we might get 234. Or, you know, 221 might even be super close to it. Uh, so this, the, the probability of being left equals 0 0.11 is the long-term probability and it should, so it will lead to that and approximately that many people. But for one trial or a single experiment, it likely varies a little bit. So let's talk a little bit more about probability in general. I've been throwing around the words experiment and trial and stuff like that. Maybe I should be a little more specific. Experiments are any process where the outcome is uncertain. Sometimes you don't have to do anything to do the experiment. Just let time pass. What's the probability it's going to rain tomorrow? Probably pretty low. It's September 3rd today. Tomorrow's September 4th. We're heading into a very, very hot weekend. It's supposed to be 108 on uh, Saturday or Sunday. Uh, and it's a dry heat. Right now there's fires in California. I, I don't think it's going to rain, so it's probably low. But until tomorrow happens, we really don't know. Uh, if there's no clouds coming in, they're, they're like very certain it's not going to happen. But if there's, uh, you know, some, they like to call them weather makers on the news. If there's some weather makers coming in, some clouds that are gray, they may or may not rain. So they determine the probability. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe based on humidity, wind speed. Uh, Stuff like that, not sure.
but we don't know for certain whether or not it's going to happen. Okay. Uh, so that's an experiment. An event is any outcome or collection of outcomes. from a probability experiment and maybe the easiest way to illustrate this is with the deck of cards recall there are four suits with 13 cards each. I can call an event. I can choose events to be any combination of cards. Or it could just be a single card. I could just say, so examples, let's do some examples. Uh, Ace of spades alone, that could be an event. And there is, so the probability of that happening, Ace of spades, there is one Ace of spades in the deck, there was 52 cards, one over 52. I could also say declare the event would be uh, drawing or picking a club. So the probability of getting a club, well now there's more than one outcome that leads to that. There's actually 13 outcomes in a deck of cards that are clubs. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then the face cards, Jack, Queen, King. There's still 52 cards total. This one simplifies to one over four. Uh, or we could do uh, selecting a king. The probability of selecting a king randomly, there are four kings out of 52. And later on, we'll explore what happens if we want to throw more things in the category. Uh, if there's just one event, a one outcome, these are called simple events. Uh, have one outcome. And they're frequently represented by a lowercase e followed by a number down below. I'm going to say e with a lowercase i right there, where i equals one, two, three, uh, uh, the number, whichever outcome it is. When we look at this in general, for general things, but for, for general events, we use capital letters. Like capital E or capital F. Those are common examples. Uh, a or b sometimes they like to use a or b uh, sometimes they like to use e or f and my pro tip for you is when you're doing this pro tip this is an al jefe tip but i hell most professors should give you this tip 
Uh, pro tip, use a letter that matches the group name. Matches the group or individuals in the group. Uh, so if I'm doing the hearts, maybe I should use H for the first letter. If I'm doing hearts or diamonds, those are all the red cards. Maybe I should use R. If I'm looking at spades or clubs, B might be a good choice. Oftentimes though, when you have B and then they're using colors, uh, they might have blue in there as well. So they tend to use or BK for black and BL for blue. If there's, you know, this would be not in a deck of cards, of course, or not in a standard deck of cards. Not in a typical deck of cards. But I'm sure they'll give you problems in borrowing marbles and, and crap like that. Uh, there's black marbles and blue marbles, maybe choosing when they both start with the same letter, uh, either choose a different letter or choose like the first two letters. And when they like match up, don't go with like three letters. That just starts to get unruly. Maybe pick something that's a little bit clearer. So BK, those are the letters in black. Uh, definitely, definitely do not use P. Do not use capital P as that letter is to re is reserved to indicate probability. Uh, so let's give another example that's not like gambling. Uh, let's say the let's say an experiment is selecting two children or selecting two students. How about that? Uh, my experiment will be selecting two students. Let's list the possible outcomes. So I'm going to make a little table. And let's just say I'm drawing students from like maybe a classroom or from the, the roster. First student, second student. I, let's assume binary. I know that's not necessarily a good assumption, but this makes this a lot easier to go over the possible outcomes. If we don't go with binary, then uh, people identify as a lot of different things and that just, this just gets unmanageable uh, to give an example. Uh, so possible outcomes I have here, I could select a boy or a male first and then another boy as a second one. Or I could select a boy and then a girl. Or that's both possible outcomes where I start with a boy. The two outcomes where I start with a girl, the first person's a girl, the second person could be a girl, or the second person could be a boy. These are the four possible outcomes. So there's four possible outcomes. So if I, we want to label the events, 
maybe uh, let's name this one E1, this is E2, this is E3, this is E4. So you might see that kind of stuff. Uh, and let's calculate the probability. Probability of each event. So we'll start with probability E1. Probability E1 is, remember it's the number of outcomes in an event or in the event, number of outcomes, divided by a total number in sample. Sample space. There was one event that had E1. There was four possible total. So if we look at that, we do that in a calculator, one divided by four, the probability of getting two boys is 0 0.25. And we'll find that if we do it on each of those, E3, E2, E4, each of them, there is one outcome that happens that way. Out of four outcomes, each of these is 0 0.25. Notice if we add these up, the sum is one. For all probabilities. Uh, if it doesn't equal one, it's not a probability model. or there was rounding, or rounding happened. Like the leaning Jowler thing, they didn't add up to one. Okay? What if I wanna know, so like, those are the probabilities of those events. Let's do it, a, let's enable an event something different, not something like that. So we're gonna use that same stuff, what, let's say uh, B, event B, event B is selecting only one boy. So we can look at our probability, our events, E1, E2, E3, E4, which ones had one boy. E1 had two boys. This is a note. E2 had one boy. Yes, that counts. E3 had two girls. There's no boys present, so no. And E4, it was the second student selected was a boy. So there was only one boy. That one counts as a yes. So if I say the probability of B happening, there were one outcome, two outcomes, two outcomes that occurred out of four. And two divided by four simplifies to one half. The way you can simplify without a calculator, try showing how the numbers are, what multiplies to make them. 2 is 1 times 2, 4 is 2 times 2, and if they're multiplied, only multiplication on top and bottom, if a number occurs in both spots, it can cancel out, and it leaves behind a 1. So I'm left with 1 times 1 on top, 2 times 1 on top. This is 1 over 2, and if we do that in decimal form, that is 0 0.5. I want you to notice, hopefully you did notice, notice that probabilities look like relative frequencies.
look again they actually look identical to relative frequencies and the ideas are closely related but they are different. How they're different. Relative frequency. This is the summary of the data of a prior experiment. On a prior experiment. Like if I roll a six sided die a thousand times and record the results and write down the the relative frequency of each event relative frequency is the number of events over total number of or number of times a single event happens over the total number of events same thing as probability but when we do probability probability measures the likeliness of a future event occurring. Okay, that's the difference, a future event occurring. Almost done. This lesson is almost done. It's a little bit longer because I had to cover stuff like dice and cards that are quicker to do in person. Uh, so let me give you some information that you also need to know. We're almost done. An event is considered unusual. If it occurs or has a probability of occurring less than 5% of the time, less than or equal to 5% of the time. percent of the time and if i as we talked about going from percents to decimals 5.0 percent if i move the decimal left twice this is 0 0.05 so if the probability of an event is less than or equal to that's that's that symbol right there less than or equal to 0 0.05, the event is unusual. Uh, memorize this. It's gonna come up repeatedly throughout the semester. Okay, it's important, learn it. Now in poker, here's some fun things. Like if you like poker, if you like Texas Hold'em, let's go with Texas Hold'em. The probability of getting a pocket pair, which means you're dealt two cards face down and they're the same rank. Two two of same rank face down. The probability of that happening 
is 0 0.0588, which means when I go back to a decimal, this is 5.88%. This is not unusual, close to unusual. It feels unusual, doesn't it? If you play poker or Texas Hold'em, it doesn't feel like you get a pocket pair very often. But in terms of what we're going with, we're aiming for less than 5%. Uh, and then, but if we are more selective, like a pair of pocket aces, or pocket rockets, as they're called, which means two aces face down, and they're called rockets because the symbol on the ace is A, so AA. They look like tips of a rocket. Uh, the probability of this occurring is 0 0.00452 or 0.452%. We move the decimal right twice to get the percentage. This is unusual. And if you do play Texas Hold'em, uh, another fun fact about pocket aces uh, that is unusual, it sure as hell feels like it's unusual to win with pocket aces. There's always somebody that will play crap cards like 2-7 offsuit, and they'll beat you because they shouldn't be playing. You push them out of the, you bet high to chase them away, and they call with crap cards. Uh, which rarely win, but if you get enough people with crap cards calling, uh, there's a chance that one of them gets lucky on the draw. Uh, so if you play poker, it doesn't really feel, it feels unusual to win with pocket aces too, even though it shouldn't. Against another, one other hand, they, they win more often than not. But when you get three or four people all calling, then it the probability shifts. One last term that you need to know is subjective probability. And this is entirely based on personal judgment. And I even mentioned an example earlier that does this. Uh, examples include a meteorologist or weatherman, meteorologist, meteorologist, uh, forecasting the weather. That's a, an example. Uh, it's based on personal judgment. They look at the results of what's going on with humidity, stuff like that. They have a good idea. They have enough experience to make a reasonable uh, opinion or judgment. Another possible example, another example that you might be familiar with, economists uh, predicting future stock market values or stock market futures. You work with stocks long enough, you know, well, certain cries, certain times of the year, stocks go up, stocks go down based on the type of stock they are. Uh, that wraps up 5.1. It's a little bit longer because I was going over all the terminology and stuff. 5.2, 5.3, I'll be doing a little bit. Uh, they're shorter. Peace. Remember, come by Zoom or uh, send me an email if you got any questions.